<sighs> Good morning, everyone. I feel like a butt muffin, but that is not going to stop today's photography adventure. We're going to go to the densest part of the city and grab some epic shots. I'm tired. Let's go. So I'm currently in a beautiful, beautiful temple. I'm not gonna be taking any photos here because I don't really feel comfortable spending too much time here. I don't wanna intrude on people actually worshiping. And so I'm just doing a quick stop, get some cinematics. It looks really beautiful and it just helps me get in the mood of filming and taking photos, being in a very beautiful, tranquil place because where we're going next is not that. It's gonna be super chaotic, but it's gonna be amazing for photography, but I'm just taking this moment to get ready. I've just finished at the ta- I was about to say at the table, it's certainly not a table. I've just finished at the temple, it's begun to rain pretty heavy now, which is a mixed feeling for urban photography. It is actually really awesome for getting reflections, things like that, it'll make the image a lot more moody. However, it does mean that the equipment, I don't want it to get too wet, so it is going to be a bit more limiting with where I can actually take the photos, but we're going to head now and go to the area where we're gonna go take those photos. So hopefully we don't get too wet along the way. The cool thing about this area I'm gonna go take photos in is it's the densest region in the world. So it is gonna be crazy for urban photography. There's probably nowhere better. And I can just see the start of it there now. It's amazing. It's sort of like looking at a castle, but the castle walls are like just a bunch of apartment buildings. So it is beautiful lighting in here there's a bunch of different alleyways that come through into this very dense area of Macau because it has been quite rainy the shadows and the, and the different reflections that can be cast from all these neon signs is really cool especially in this alleyway setting but we are almost there at the photography location it looks amazing storm I got up the stairs and then all of a sudden there was a bunch of thunder and lightning and it was also very frightening and so I wasn't able to continue filming because this camera that I'm using to film isn't as weatherproof as the camera I'm using to take photos with so I just focused on taking photos through the rain what I want to do because I couldn't film as I was taking these photos I literally just ran around and I was wearing like a raincoat that kind of makes me look like a ghost so it was pretty cool, pretty spooky, but I wasn't able to actually film it. So I'm here in the studio now to go through the photos that I took and just explain to you a little bit of my process, why did I take them, and hopefully share with you some 
helpful tips and tricks that will help you step up your urban photography to the next level. Maybe you're like here, and when you watch it, you might go like here, which is epic time. I think the most important thing before I even go through the photos for anyone wanting to take urban photography is location. Location is always, I think, the most important thing when it comes to almost any type of photography. It doesn't matter what camera you got or how good you are with it, if you're in front of a beautiful place, your images will usually turn out the way the place looks. And so today I was super lucky, and I kinda always am lucky when I'm in Macau to be able to take urban photography photos in the densest region in the world, and especially in this area, which is like half car park, half not car park, but just a whole lot of awesomeness. It's very cinematic location, and the rain wasn't very good for filming, but it was awesome, really awesome for taking photos. Basically, it coats every surface in a little bit of a shine and a shimmer, and sometimes a reflection too, and it just makes your images all the more moody. Whoa! Okay, that's me jumping into the photos. <laughs> so photo number one. Let's talk about it, let's talk about it. Something that I do quite a lot of and I try to do in this frame is I always try to shoot through things in the environment. So using leaves or grass or buildings or anything really just to obstruct the frame in interesting ways. And I think that just makes for a cool, interesting frame and a fun way to help bring the viewer's focus onto whatever your subject is. If you're covering a lot of the rest of the frame, then people can only really look at the one bit that's not covered. So the next photo I wanna talk about is something that I learned about quite recently, and it's something I've been doing before, but I never knew the name of it. And it's got a big fancy pants, scrunchy blance name called, and I instantly forgot it. This, I suck. I suck, whatever. I know words and then I put down a camera and the words go by. Architectural minimal, minimal, min oh, damn it. Architectural minimal, oh, darn. Architectural minimalist, that's a hard word to say. Basically what it means is focusing in on one area of a building or architecture or anything on the street. So you're not really showing the whole thing. It's not a wide shot, it's a very tight shot showing you one specific area or element of the architecture. Almost comes across more a sort of arty vibe rather than like a showcase vibe, which is sort of what I was going for in this one. And I like how the grates connect together. It's really cool in Macau. All the buildings look a little bit like mini jail cells because they all have grates on the outside. But this was a very unique one where all the grates came together at a corner of the building because they're so dense, right? These apartment buildings are almost slamming into each other. It's really cool. And so I just put it on the sort of line going down the middle so that it's like a balanced frame. Either side is the corner coming into the middle. And then just with that zoom in, it, it, it removes all the other distractions in that area and, and just allows the viewer to focus in on that one part of the building that I really liked. Oh, also on the top left, you might see it's a little bit strange. It's like the reason for that is there were some leaves, a plant pot coming down, and I just shot quite close to them so that they were obstructing a part of it. I think it just adds like another element to the frame, which just makes it a little more exciting, maybe? I think so. This next one, I, I really like this one. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't mean to do it, and then I looked through it and I was like, whoa, yay, <laughs> that was an accident. This is a very much like, leading lines image and so leading lines are basically lines that go for your image that your viewers eye will focus on and it'll bring you all the way through the image and this one that i took has quite a lot you've got the buildings coming down in a row and then you've also got the other building which is the one that i'm taking the photo under like covering here and it's completely black and it's quite nice to cover that part of the frame with the same line that is here, it's just an appealing balance to have that covered part of the frame be a diagonal line that's almost the same as the diagonal line by the buildings. It's one of those things where you can't 100% explain it, but your eyes just go like, oh, sexy. <laughs> if you're taking photos of urban landscapes, just always keep an eye out for leading lines, symmetry, things like this you can play around with. The next one's nothing really creative. It's pretty simple. The two sides of the buildings were coming down. It's a really cool area, and so I just stood right in the middle. It's just a nice balanced frame, 
and the lighting is cool, it's quite moody, and I like the sort of mystery added to the darkened buildings. This one is my favorite one, I really like this one. I like this building, and I was looking at it, I was like, I like you, I just don't know how to take a photo of you. So I went around the bottom of it lots and just experimented with different angles, and this was the one that really turned out the best, I think. I sort of was at an angle taking it, and the way it looks is because the lighting is up very intense up here and I brought up the highlights in the edit, it makes it seem like it's towering up into the clouds or into fogs which makes it so much more dramatic because you're like, God, how big is this building? The other thing I did with this image which I think really helps make it pack a punch and make it really impactful, I tried to get it where there's an air conditioning unit close up and then here's still a bit of a building as well. And again, that just makes very dark areas in the frame so that the lit area is the area where the viewer is going to look at most, which is the area I wanted the viewer to look at most. And again, it's one of those things, it's where, where you have very contrasting elements in the frame that help work towards the one main element that you want to be focused on in the frame. So having a dark area here will help the viewers I naturally go over here and that sort of happened in this one was sort of either side like this and that really helps the viewer just keep their eyes forward at that tower and be like, damn, look at that. This one is like a good example of angles. I just stood in the middle of the, of the building, you know, the buildings are so dense and I got really low and I put the camera up so most of the frame is covered by the building just to make it more like impressive and dramatic and huge and towering. I zoomed my lens out all the way and I just shot straight up leaving only a little bit of the sky to kind of bring the viewer's eye up to that tiny bit of sky up there. And then finally, finally, basically I saw a little bit of a slant and the water was dripping down and it was dripping down close to where the building connects so there was like two sort of lines, the water dropping down and then the line of the building going down so I wanted to try get it to where the water's dropping towards the camera as well as sort of the line of the building coming down towards the camera and it's just sort of creating again leading lines which help like a balanced frame but doing it in a creative way using the water droplets as a leading line I thought it was quite fun and again if you want to capture something that is moving very quickly so imagine this is the water droplet this is what it's going to look like you can't really focus on my hand right but if you shoot it at two thousandths of a second the water is going to look like that in your photo so it's not going to be a blur anymore it's going to be very still and very clear that's just a general tip if you're doing action photography you want your shutter speed as low as possible again very moody that was the sort of general vibe and the general theme of this photo shoot so i was taking photos more of like hard concrete grays and blacks and whites this is what i was working with not vibrant at all i wanted moody and dark and textured and so it's important when you're planning your shoot to just have in the back of your head what type of photo do you want to create here and it's okay if, if weather conditions don't allow or the environment's different change it up go for it but it just helps to have an idea of the type of image like the type of feeling you want to give to your viewer we did it there you go let me know what you think of this style if you do enjoy me talking to camera in studio and you'd like to see more videos like this please do let me know thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy i hope it's helpful i'll see you in the next video